So we're starting unit three called quadratic functions. And your first topic is, is 3.1, investigating quadratic functions in vertex form. That's on pages 142 to 162 in your text. Our curriculum objective is to demonstrate understanding of quadratic functions of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and of their graphs, including vertex, domain and range, direction of opening, axis of symmetry, and x and y intercepts. And our lesson outcomes to learn what a quadratic function looks like when it is in vertex form to explore and learn what effect each of the variables of a quadratic in vertex form has on the shape of a parabola, and number three, to learn some of the terminology used with quadratic functions and parabolas. So a quadratic function is said to be in vertex form when it's in the following form, and that's f of x equals a x minus p squared plus q. And f of x is the same thing as saying y, so that's like saying y equals a x minus p squared plus q. So your job is to use graphing software and figure out how a, p, and q all affect the graph of a quadratic function. We call that a parabola. So your best bet would be using the graphing software that we used last semester at www.desmos.com slash calculator. And there's a direct link to this on my blog. You'll want to manipulate one variable at a time. Compare the shape of that parabola to what we call the normal parabola, which is f of x or y equals x squared. So for example, you'll want to graph y, f, y equals x squared and y equals 3x squared at the same time so you can compare what effect that 3 has on the graph. Then do the same thing um, for values for in P and Q. And you'll always want to remember that the world exists in fractions as well as positive and negative numbers. So you want to substitute in fractions, positives and negatives for each of these variables and see what effect they have on the shape of the graph. And you should also make a list of the following terms to ensure that when you hear this terminology being used, you are not totally confused. And you may need to do a little bit of extra research, so maybe online or in the textbook to find these answers. So you want to um, find out what direction of opening means, what vertex means, the equation for the vertex, axis of symmetry, the equation for the axis of symmetry, x-intercept, y-intercept, maximum value, how to actually find the maximum value, minimum value, how to actually find the minimum value, and then what the domain and the range all mean. So there's a lot of terminology you need to figure out. We've talked about it before, but this will be like a nice little refresher for you. So your assignment then is on pages 157 to 158, just questions one to seven, and we'll do part two of this tomorrow. So good luck, and we'll see you in class.